Hello YouTube. I have kind of an interesting video for you guys here. Um, today I'll be building a mid-range budget workstation PC. This isn't like a super awesome gaming build, but I, s I still think it should be pretty interesting for most of you guys. Um, but just as a little bit of background, my dad needs a new computer because he's still using his 2009 Lenovo laptop that's running Windows XP at this day and age. So it's uh, it's pretty bad. So I, I decided to build him another one. Uh, he approved a cost of four hundred, actually five hundred dollars for a gaming rig. So not gaming rig, sorry, a workstation. So I'm building one. Um, so I, I guess I'll just go ahead and start going over the parts that I bought for this. This is actually a do-it-yourself kit bought straight from Newegg. I originally had some parts laid out uh, individually, but that cost over four hundred dollars, and I found this uh, do it DIY kit for three hundred and eighty. So it's, it was actually less expensive and more powerful than what I had planned out, so I went ahead and bought it. <clears throat> For to start off, I got an F2A70M HD2 AMD motherboard. This is a socket FM2 Plus, and it's a, I think it's a micro ATX. It's pretty small, certainly, I can tell you that much. It's much smaller than I expected it to be, actually, but um, yeah, I should go ahead and pull it out of its packaging for you guys here. So there we have it. That's how big it is. It's a pretty small little motherboard. Um, like I said, socket, socket FM2 Plus has got two DDR3 memory slots, and I think it takes up to either 1866 or 2133 megahertz memory, which is pretty good. PCI Express 3.0 by 16 slot, a PCI Express by one, and a good old PCI slot. Um, looks like a pretty good motherboard, and the reason I bought this one is because it has three integrated video outputs, HDMI, um, DVI, and VGA, so it can actually run three simultaneous monitors. Uh, off the motherboard graphics as long as you have an, an AMD APU. Um, speaking of which, I bought the AMD a 10 k It's a 4.1 GHz quad-core CPU. It's actually a super clock to a speed of 4.4, so it's, it's a pretty powerful CPU. Um, I was kind of puzzled by the fact that it came with this little heatsink here. Um, this this heatsink is smaller than some of the heatsinks I've seen to like AMD Athlon 64X2, so uh, I hope it'll do the job for cooling this CPU, because I know that a 4.4 uh, GHz like i7 would take a heatsink a lot bigger than that. But something else that was kind of interesting is that the CPU has the pins on the CPU rather than on the motherboard. I know Intel changed their design with the Socket T back in around 2005, but I guess uh, AMD never caught on to that, because you know, it's a great way to break a CPU to bend through pins, trust me. Now I've got 8 gigs of 1600 MHz DDR3 memory. Uh, I would have bought two 4 gig chips to make it run in dual channel. I probably would have bought 1866 if I could, but I couldn't uh, because this was a DIY kit and I couldn't customize it. Got a 1 terabyte Western Digital SATA 6 gigabits a second, uh, 7200 RPM hard drive. Pretty self explanatory, I guess. An Asus DVD rewritable drive. Funny thing is, DVD rewritable drives on Newegg cost about the exact same as DVD ROM drives, so you know, we might as well get a rewritable. What's interesting for a build of this budget is that I also got a 128 gig SATA SanDisk solid state drive. Um, that's pretty interesting considering the fact that this DIY kit costs a total of about $380, so that's it's gonna make it fly pretty good for that price. And this, actually, I forgot to make it a case. The case is a Logisys, I've got the exact model, but it's a Logisys case. Um, it's on the cheap end, honestly. A lot of people said that wasn't very good, but, um, you know, I got it and it looks pretty good to me. It's got a little bit of dust on it, so I took the plastic off, but um, it's a pretty solid looking case. It's kind of light, it's kind of got that flimsy feel to it, but shouldn't be that big of a concern. I mean, it'll hold the parts just fine, and as long as it doesn't fall apart or break or anything, I'm fine with it. It looks pretty cool, actually. It doesn't have a plastic side window, but that, you know, it, it's a workstation, it doesn't need to have that. And this comes with a 450 watt Logisys power supply, which I don't know how much I trust it, but you know, if it if it dies, I'll just buy a new power supply for it and replace it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get down to building this PC. I'm actually going to put the camera on time lapse mode, like I usually do with my builds, and just just do a nice good time lapse of me putting this thing together. So 
So it appears that someone at Newegg screwed up pretty hard because there's a whole lot of incompatibilities with the hardware here. The first I notice is that this power supply has one four pin connector, right? This motherboard requires two, so I have an adapter for that, that adapts Molex to um, two four pins so I can get around that. The second is that there's no 2.5 inch mount at all, so I can't mount my, heart, my SSD in there, which is you know, a pretty big problem as well. Um, what else? The other problem is that this power supply doesn't have enough SATA power connectors to go to the hard drive, the SSD, and the, um, the DVD drive. So this power supply is basically a piece of crap, and I can't, I can't use it for this computer um, for a permanent solution because it doesn't have enough connectors for my three drives. Um, although I, I can adapt it to output to those four pin connectors and uh, yeah so it is kind of unfortunate um, but I think I can get it working to a basic level. I'll just have to grab my adapter for this thing and just let my SSD bounce around in there a little bit. But um, So I can test it out pretty soon but unfortunately um, over the long run I am going to have to buy a, different, a better power supply for outputs because this one isn't really that acceptable. But um, it was actually a very quick build. It only took me about 20 minutes because I had to, uh, I had to, I had to run, run somewhere else to get a magnetic screwdriver because my mine was pretty crappy. But but yeah, um, so I'll continue the video when I've got more, uh, well, more to talk about really. Okay, so I've moved this thing out to my computer work area because I don't have Ethernet inside the house to download drivers and updates and stuff. I took my 650 watt power supply that I purchased recently for my. Uh, 2009 gaming PC because this old power supply blew out. I just popped it in this thing, so it'll be a temporary solution. Uh, this computer isn't for me, as I explained. It's for my uh, dad's work, so I'm, I'm going to have to buy another power supply for this and bill them for it, and then uh, take the 651 and put it back in another PC. But anyway, um, I'm making well, I'm making an update because now is the moment of truth. I'm going to go ahead and plug this thing in and see if it starts up. Power supply is switched to on. No, oh, that's okay. I've got a VGA monitor plugged into it because I don't have a DVI one out here, but it doesn't really matter. So I have video output, which is good. Oh, or not. Oh, yep. Okay, good. F9. Nope, missed it. That's interesting. It tells me it four times. Huh. Okay, it's got a couple cool LEDs on it. It looks like crap. I can't see it, but that looks pretty crappy. Um, I missed the, uh, BIOS. Okay. Yay, processor type, okay. The mouse works, okay. So, looks like I should be able to do all my stuff from in here, because it doesn't... Okay, that, was, that wasn't a whole lot of system information. There wasn't really any options. Alright, well, I'm just going to go ahead and install Windows and do all that crap and make an update later. Okay, so Windows is all installed. I actually had a little bit of trouble doing it because my disk wasn't clean and it wasn't reading off the disk. I thought my, maybe my drive was bad. So I tried installing off the USB and that didn't work either because I thought it needed some DVD drivers. And it, I just cleaned up the disk and it worked fine. So, yeah, was, I'm just installing the basic programs and stuff on it. Um, the stock heatsink, like I said, is rather small. Um, but it does a pretty good job of keeping the CPU under a chilly 93 degrees Celsius. Uh, note the sarcasm, because uh, that's not chilly at all. That's almost boiling temperature, so yeah, it's not good. But if I, if I feel the heat sink, though, it's like stone cold. So I think I might want to reapply the heat sink to the CPU, or maybe just the programs are reading it wrong. I really don't know. Also, this rear fan makes a lot of noise. I'm going to put one of the blue fans in the back, because I, I have three blue fans spare for my 2012 gaming PC that I freed up when I bought uh, quieter fans for it. But um, I, I ended up, eh, I had a little hard drive bracket um, that could adapt 2.5 to 3.5 inch, but uh, unfortunately, or it can also adapt 3.5 to 5.5 inch, but it doesn't work with the SSD. Um, actually, because I don't think it's made to adapt 2.5 to 3.5, I think well, since I have two of these, I use them both to adapt 3.5 to 5.5. So the SSD is still bouncing around in there, which is really no good. But um, nothing's really broken, though. Just said, you know, we don't want to look into that um, you know, really, really hot CPU temperature. And uh, 
also replace that rear fan and order a new power supply when it actually has the outputs I need. But the, the, the temperatures fluctuate quite a bit. If you're watching the jump, not so much right now. Yeah, see, it just jumped 10 degrees Celsius. I don't. That can't be right. So I'm, I think what I'm going to do is actually just pull the you know, to shut the computer off, pull the heat sink off, and feel if the CPU is really hot or not. If it is, obviously it's running hot. If it isn't, then not a problem. Because, you know, the uh, software might be wrong. But, yeah, normally I'd download a whole bunch of programs for it, but my internet's really slow. So it'll probably take a good hour or two to download all the updates, if not more. But, uh, yeah, I think it's pretty much ready to go. So I think that might be the conclusion to this video. Um, that will be the conclusion to this video. I will make it. I think I might make an update on it when I get a new power supply for it and stuff. But yeah, I mean, pretty much is all said and done. I mean, all, all I really gotta do is put that fan in the back and pop the case side on. That's all I can do for now until I get a uh, an adapter for the SSD mount and a new power supply. But yeah, that's gonna be it. Thank you guys for watching. I know this build isn't the most impressive or the mo most interesting. It really didn't end up very well. I'm kind of disappointed in Newegg for not even putting together hardware that's compatible, but whatever, um, it works I guess. So thank you guys for watching and hope to see you in the next video.